So today we'll talk about high hydration dough. Now what does it mean, high hydration? It means that the dough contains a relatively large amount of water in relation to the total flour. And why would you want to add more water to your dough? High hydration will give your bread a more open crumb and those big bubbles. So let's get to it. As always, you'll find all the weights and measurements and details down in the description box. So let's see what equipment we'll use. This is the home baker's best friend, a cast iron pot with a lid. During baking it traps steam inside and lets the dough expand by preventing it from drying out. If you don't have one of these, just use a thick bottom tray. And now to the usual suspects. You'll need a bowl for mixing, scale for weighing your ingredients, a scraper, a razor blade or a knife for scoring your dough, obviously a temperature probe, and you'll need a bread basket. If you don't have one, you can use a cake tin lined with tea towel. Now for the ingredients, we'll use some strong white bread flour, water, some fine sea salt, I'm going to use some caraway seeds, but that's optional, and you'll need a nice and active sourdough starter. So the first thing we need to do is to build the leaven. A leaven consists of a portion of the total water, a portion of the total flour, and a little bit of your sourdough starter. This will be the foundation for our dough. A strong leaven is crucial for any bake. And making it is straightforward. You just mix all the ingredients until there's no more dry flour and you leave it to ferment. I'm using room temperature water, which is around 21 degrees C, so it will take me around 12 to 16 hours for this to be ready. It should almost triple in size. Normally do this overnight, so it's ready the next morning. Now because a high hydration dough contains a lot of water, the dough will be very wet and hard to work with. So for the best results and to help us out, we'll do a process called autolization, in which you just mix the remaining flour and water and leave it to hydrate. I am adding the seeds now, but that's not crucial to the process. Now, flour contains two proteins, gluten and gliadin. When water is added, those two proteins create gluten. So to have better gluten development, you need to let your flour hydrate. This is especially true for high hydration dough. So autolization is a step we take to help us out. And it's super simple. All you need to do is mix the flour and the water, cover it, and leave it to autolize for two to three hours. And we are not adding the salt right now, because the salt will compete with the flour for water. And two to three hours later, you'll see that the dough is completely changed. Before, it was just a sticky mass now, if I wet my hands a little bit so they don't stick, I pick the dough up, and as you can see, it's super stretchy, and there's lots of gluten. And we didn't even do anything, we just mixed the ingredients and left them. So this is a very good method for helping you out and hydrating the flour and creating gluten. And remember to get your timings right, because autolization takes two to three hours, and obviously you need your leaven to be ready when the auto lease is ready. Now we'll add the leaven to the dough and give it a good mix. There's no real technique here. Just wet your hand to prevent sticking and just squeeze it all together. Mash it all up in the bowl. And you may have noticed that we are not adding the salt yet. That will come a little bit later. Now just mix everything to a cohesive mass. And once you're happy with that, tip it out on your table. This dough is at 80% hydration, so it's quite wet. And to knead it, we use a stretch and fold method. Keep a little bowl of water nearby and your scraper so that you can wet your hands to prevent them from sticking and use the scraper to collect the dough up from the table. So to perform a stretch and fold is quite straightforward. You pick the dough up by one side, stretch it against the table and fold it forwards and repeat. So by picking it up by one side you're kind of crisscrossing the pattern. And now if we had not done the auto lace step this would be very difficult. The dough would be super sticky and it would take probably twice as long to work. But this already feels quite smooth and full of gluten. So around 5 minutes into the kneading process, we'll add the salt. All you need to do is stretch the dough out on your table in a thin layer. There's no right or wrong here, just stretch it out as thin as you can. Now sprinkle over your salt, and I do suggest using fine salt because that will be easier to work into the dough. And then you can wet your hands and rub the salt in, squeeze it in, dimple it in. Again, there's no right or wrong here. Just combine it with the dough. Give it a little massage. 
And always remember not to wet your hands too much when working with your dough because you are adding water to the recipe. And once you're happy with that, use your scraper to scrape it all back together and we'll knead it for five more minutes using the stretch and fold method. You can really feel the dough becoming nice and smooth, stretchy, elastic and it will be a lot less sticky than in the beginning. It will still stick, don't get me wrong. What you need to remember when working with high hydration dough is to be quick and gentle. So a total of 10 minutes of stretch and folds and the dough is ready for its first proofing. Now you can pop it into your bowl and always take the temperature of your finished dough. 23 to 24 degrees C is just about perfect for me. If your dough is cooler, place it in a warmer area of your kitchen. And if it's warmer, then the other way around. But this is okay, we'll cover it and proof it for one hour. And after the first hour of proofing, we'll perform a fold. Now folding is especially important in high hydration dough, because as we fold it, we create more layers in the gluten structure, and we create tension in the dough. This will make it stand up whilst it's baking, instead of spreading out. In this case, folding also serves another purpose. It will equalize the temperature in the dough. For example, if the dough is cool in the center and warm on the outside, the folding will distribute the temperature evenly and you'll get a more even fermentation. Now once we've done the first fold, we can cover it up and proof it for one more hour. And you should really start seeing a good rise in the dough by now. And after the second hour of proofing, we'll perform another fold. Now this is called a coil fold and I'll show you how it works. Always wet your hands when folding, so pick the dough up by the middle, release it from the bowl and roll it underneath itself, then turn the bowl and repeat. You want to do this on all corners, a couple of times. What is important to remember that every subsequent fold has to be performed more gently than the previous one. You don't want to knock out any of the fermentation gases accumulated inside the dough. Now, second fold done, cover it up and leave it to proof for one more hour. And a good sign that your dough is proofing well and you have good gluten development will be that the dough will not be flat, it will be domed. And after the third hour of proofing, it's pre-shaping time. Now dust your dough with flour, release it from the bowl using your scraper and pop it out on your table. If you were making more than one loaf, then at this point you would divide the dough first and then pre-shape. But we'll use the pre-shape to give the dough a few more folds and kind of shape it into the final form. So to pre-shape a high hydration dough, stretch it out, make sure it's floured, you don't want it sticking, you fold the bottom up, cross over the sides, then pull the top right down to the bottom. Once you've done that, stitch up the sides. It's important to keep your fingers floured so they don't stick. And once you've stitched it up, you can roll it into a tight roll. And then just tighten it against the table using your scraper. This dough is really light and full of bubbles, that's a very good sign. Just don't pull it too tight, you might rip the surface. After the pre-shape, we need to let the dough rest for 30 minutes, for the gluten to relax so we can perform the final shaping. And dust your bread basket with flour, and also dust the dough with flour. And then release it from the table using your scraper, flip it smooth side down, and the final shaping will be almost the same as the pre-shape. So once again, stretch the dough out, fold the bottom up, cross over the sides, then pull the top right down to the bottom, and then stitch it up. And once you've stitched it up, roll it. This takes a bit of practice, but don't worry. If you mess it up, your basket's gonna keep the shape anyway. And you can try next time. Dust your dough with flour a little bit as well. Then using your scraper, pick it up and place it in your basket, smooth side down. And what you can do now is pinch together any seams. You can also stitch the bottom up, just to help it keep its shape. We will cold proof this dough in the fridge overnight. So you want to make sure you've done your best because this is the last time you will touch the dough before baking. Sprinkle the bottom with a bit of flour, cover it, leave it in your refrigerator. I like to use shower caps, they're reusable and they fit over the bread basket perfectly. You can refrigerate this dough for up to 18 hours. And the following day, one hour before you're baking, you want to preheat your oven, 240 degrees C, no fan, and also preheat your pot. 
we will bake the bread straight from the fridge. Now look at that beauty. It's puffed up nicely. It's got that wobble. Feels quite light. We're ready to bake. So get your razor blade or your knife, whatever you're using. Get your hot pan. Then pop the dough straight into the middle. I know a lot of people dust the pan with something, but it's not totally necessary. It's not going to stick. Now what you can do is dust the top of the dough with flour. It'll make it easier to slash with a razor. And to score it, do one long cut at an angle about an inch deep from the top down to the bottom. This will give the dough a space to expand out of. And then we'll bake it for 20 minutes with the lid on. And after the first 20 minutes of baking comes the magic part. You never know what's going to be underneath that lid. And this is looking quite good. Let's get the lid off, pop it back in the oven and finish baking for 20 more minutes. And that's your high hydration open crumb bread. So there's three very important steps for a successful bake like this. A nice and strong leaven, the autolization process and the folds. And as always, any questions or suggestions, write them down in comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.